Greece, Ukraine, Poland, Spain, Hungary, Germany, Australia, France and Switzerland. We get to call the Swiss and Greece. We haven't seen a lot of those two nations actually already uh, during these World Championships. So great to see the Greeks and the Swiss represented in a final. But Jen, the athletes to watch well. Uh, we know that uh, Caballero from Spain was second in the European Championships, so he will definitely be there. Uh, the Hungarian wasn't at the European Championships, so we don't know what Panyak can bring, but what do, you, what do you know about the rest of the field? Yeah, like you're saying, um, for me, the real what's great to see in this is the fact that Greece and Switzerland are in it. Um, at senior level, we haven't seen the, Greece, the Greek athletes at all over the past few years. And I was actually talking to one of the coaches there of the Greek junior and under 23 athletes, and he said that they're really focusing on building their base, um, their junior and under 23 athletes at the moment. And um, the Greek athlete in this was 10th in the Euros. So I'm sure he's delighted to be in this A final here today and well done to him for making it through. So we have uh, Luca Lopa there from Switzerland in the extreme outside in lane nine. We have Maguire Reed from Australia, Marin Lenny from France. Again, the French, we talked about what's happening with British canoe sprint, but the French canoe sprint really rebuilding as well at the moment. Two years out from Paris, they're pretty keen to try and identify some talent and get that program up and running and get some uh, medal prospects or finals pro finalist prospects in the system for the home Olympics. But we're underway now in this 1,000 meter junior K1 final, and uh, Lanny from France going out strong. And in lane nine, it is the Swiss paddler, Lopa, who wants to make an impact. He wants to be at some stage leading this race and across in lane two from Ukraine, it's Voloshin, fourth in the European Championships, who's taken the early lead, Voloshin from Ukraine. Is it going to be another Ukraine-Hungary showdown? Already it looks like it's that way because you can see the Hungarian coming through in the middle of the field, Panyak, to challenge the Ukrainian. We've had a couple of races today already where these two countries have gone at it, hammer and tong, last man, last woman standing type thing. So it's Ukraine and Hungary at the moment, and just on the inside of the Hungarians, Caballero, the Spaniard, second in the European Championship. So just biding his time at the moment, watching what's happening alongside him. It's the Hungarian who's in front, Panyak. Voloshin from Ukraine. But now coming through into second spot is Caballero from Spain into clear second. So Hungary, Spain and Ukraine are your top three very early stages though of this thousand metre race. And a lot can change. The Hungarian looking very relaxed, nice smooth flow in the water. Spaniard. A silver medal already this year, just sitting off the boat at the moment, just watching what's happening. You can see the Ukrainians starting to drop back a little bit, and maybe it's the German, I think, coming through now to challenge for fourth position, uh, for third position, sorry. So at the moment, it's the Hungarian. Panyak, who holds the lead. Caballero, just biding his time, just waiting to pounce waiting to decide i mean do you look at the other athlete to try and work out how they're going jen and, and whether that determines when you might make a move no i think you really have to focus on yourself obviously he can see he's within under half a bow length off the hungarian and he's trying to make his move now and um, his race tactic must be to go between the 600 to 800 meter mark but i have a feeling the hungarian might have another gear now at the 200 but Let's see, maybe the Spaniards can go again. Yep, 2.50 to go, and the Spaniard is challenging the Hungarian. It is a race in two at the moment between Panyak, who's led from the start, Caballero, who's trailed him for the entire race. Panyak now, as Jen said, he looks like he's found another gear. He's slipping a bit of a distance between himself and the Spaniard. It's the Hungarian 
Somba Panyak heading towards the line, heading towards Hungary's 16th gold medal of these World Championships. Can anyone reel him in? I don't think so. I think the best chance is Cavalero, and he's going up and down in the one spot at the moment. The German is trying to get to them to maybe make a race for the silver medal, but it looks like it'll be comfortably Somba Panyak from Hungary who will take the gold. The silver will go to Spain. Marcos Cavalero, a repeat of his performance in the Europeans, and the German flying home, but it's all too late. But he will take the bronze. So Hungary, Spain, and Germany, they're your one, two, three in this K1 men's 1000 junior final. Panyak went out hard early, took the early lead. Caballero tried to challenge it around the halfway mark, but uh, Panyak had too much left and uh, just chugged up a gear and off he went and uh, comfortably cruised to the line to give the host nation their 16th gold medal of the championships. And another chance for someone to sing the national anthem with pride, or maybe not. smiling i think it's a little bit more of a grimace was it a grimace <laughs> i hope so i don't a bit cheeky to be sitting there smiling as you cross it i'm sure he's very happy I'm sure he's smiling now ours he sure would be so really a big distance between the the front three and the uh, the rest of the field there in the junior final but uh, all hats off to the winner Great uh, camaraderie there between the gold and the silver medalist. And the German wondering what might have been his timing. He flew home. He was he was definitely traveling the quickest over the last couple of hundred meters, but he left too much work to do at that stage of the race. You know, when you think about it, Jen, and uh, we mentioned earlier on in the broadcast, these are your athletes who are going to be challenging for potential world and Olympic medals, you know, post after Paris, you know, we're talking about 28, 32. Gee, Hungary is going to have a strong say in, uh, in the way of the world, isn't it? Come, yeah, they it sure to are. If they continue with their progression in, in the manner that they're going. Um, like you say, there's such depth that like, even if these athletes aren't the ones competing in a few years time, they'll have someone that's maybe half a second slower than them over yep. a thousand meters you know so every year they really have to fight for their positions on the team and um it's a very challenging selection process for them because they have so many paddlers they have so much depth and, and that's what makes them so strong you know we mentioned yesterday how the selection trials are often harder than the actual final event that they go to compete in you know getting onto the hungarian team is the tough part and then they go to a world championships and it's a bit of a doddle but uh that's the thing is other programs need to lift their game and to to try and match and do what the hungarians are doing because they're yeah. only they're only human they are only human and one thing that's different in hung hungary to most nations now i'm not sure there might be some other countries that have this system also but when they win olympic medals and um, they actually get a pension for life um, yeah. after 35 years of age so you know there's really a future there of kind of financial support yep. and reward for the years of hard work that they've put in I think Belarus might have a similar system also uh, for world championship medals as well. They would get big bonuses and yeah. I think the, Bul um, I think the Bulgarians do as well. Uh, I think the Bul I mean, a lot of these countries, surprisingly, Australia doesn't have, doesn't have a big system like that. It's, it's not 
you know, talking to some of the, you, you don't make enough as a, as a successful Olympic athlete mm -hmm. in Australia to be able to, you know, live off that for the rest of your life. Some of these athletes obviously go on to careers as public speakers and television presenters and, and the like, but uh, it's not as generous as some other countries. Of course, Jen, we all know that uh, you live the life of Riley there in Ireland. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all that incredibly generous funding you get. Well, I'm actually, I'm very thankful because... You, yes, you are. I have great support from Canoeing Ireland and Sport Ireland and the Olympic Federation of Ireland and my club, Salmon Leap Canoe Club, um, throughout the years, they've all supported me. And, you know, without their support, I wouldn't be able to compete at the level I'm at and I wouldn't have won 